Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this is Leo. I'm actually in the car today. Um, I figured I would make an introductory video and I do my best thinking when I'm in the car. So I just attached a little dashboard cam and we'll see how this goes. Um, but I was realizing today that uh, I never did an introductory video. So, I mean, in some sort of attempt to keep up my YouTube channel and actually be helpful and accessible to people, I figured that I would um, that I'd do an introductory video. So yeah, uh, my name's Leo. Uh, I got that name, I came by it actually uh, when I started dating my partner, um, who I'm now engaged to, Elisa. She has four kids, and from the beginning of meeting the kids, uh, and Elisa, they've just always called me Leo. Now, my birthday is in August, and I'm thinking that that's possibly why, you know, the whole Leo thing came about, but for whatever reason, from the very first day that I met the kids, the name Leo stuck, so, uh, I loved it. I actually loved it so much, I got it tattooed on my head right here, and it's actually in my partner Elisa's handwriting, so that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm Leo. I am 26 years old. Um, I am 99 days on testosterone today and, uh, you know, have known for a, subconsciously, I think, for about 26 years that uh, I would end up in this spot. So, um, I'm a social worker, a uh, professional photographer, musician, uh, and an artist in general. Um, I'm deeply passionate about poverty, about justice, about those sorts of things. So my career path and my artistic ventures tend to take me in that direction. Um, I'll post a link in my YouTube profile to my photography site, which I have some pretty cool work on uh, rural poverty in a first world country and in a third world country. Um, and yeah, I'll let that speak for itself. And for now, I'll just keep giving my intro. Um, I'm a lifelong athlete. I've played soccer since I was about three, and uh, I've always had a big interest in being a weightlifter. So now that I'm on T, it's been pretty exciting to see the, the gains that I've made. Um, I've increased my squat uh, by like 100 pounds in the past month. I've increased my clean and jerk by about 40 pounds. Um, I'm leg pressing 920 pounds currently, so a lot of good things going on in that department. Let's see. It's hard to just sit here and say my story because I'm pretty familiar with it, so I do better with questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment on them. Uh, feel free to find me on Instagram. My name is Leo Tejera8388, um, and I'll spell that. It's L E O T E J E R A, and then 8388. Uh, look me up. I'll add you. It'll be a good time. We'll have some conversations, or you can comment uh, on this video. Um. Let's see, man. I'm really good at public speaking, but it's kind of weird to talk to my dashboard, so. Um, yeah, I guess I mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, I've known for quite some time, even if it's been subconsciously, that I was uh, trans, which is funny because that might be one of two times I've said that out loud so far. Um, but I've, I guess I've been on a journey of understanding my whole life. Uh, but some of my earliest memories are when I was like, you know, four or five, uh, and I would just refuse to keep a shirt on, and I would lay in bed at night, and I would like cry and ask God why he didn't make me a boy. Uh, and God has been a really integral part of my life. My dad was a pastor. I have family that are missionaries, family that are, you know, deacons. Um, I myself went to college to be a pastor, so God is definitely a big part of my life. Um, so starting out on that foot made it a little bit diff more difficult to come out, probably. I'm grateful for my faith background, for sure, because it, it gave me a lot of the important parts of me, but it was definitely added some challenges. So from the earliest time, I definitely remember like laying in bed and, and crying and saying, God, why didn't you make me a boy? Make me a boy. Can I wake up tomorrow as a boy? And actually, it's kind of a family joke um, that, I, that I used to do that. And, and part of me gets a little frustrated because I wish my parents would have seen that and not made it a joke. They would have realized it was real. But that was 26 years ago in like rural Ohio and Pennsylvania, backwoods places, um, and in a conservative evangelical environment. I actually don't even think that, I don't even think that being transgender was something that would have ever crossed their radar given under context. Um, and it didn't cross my radar till a lot later in life. Uh, ironically, I think I knew that I felt masculine before I knew that I was, uh, that I was gay by orientation. 
Um, I think I knew a lot longer that I just felt masculine. And it took me a good time, you know, 26 years, say, to kind of sort out um, what was my orientation, what was my gender identity, and what pressure was I under based on the culture that I grew up in. Uh, my partner asked me one time why it took me so long to realize um, or, or to admit that I was FTM, and I think it was because for so long, I try to do the least drastic thing to make me, to kind of mitigate my losses and keep me in somewhat of an acceptable stance with the community uh, that I grew up in and my family of origin. But I've come to the place where I realized I can't mitigate my own identity, you know, I can't mitigate my orientation. And so I've got to be honest. Um, I came out as a lesbian about six years ago in my senior year of Bible college, which let me tell you is not a crackpot time to decide to come out as a lesbian. Um, it didn't go very well, uh, but thankfully I still ha I have regained connection with my family, which is awesome. Um, so I came out then and, and I kind of thought that, well, I, would, I just grew up in a system that was very strictly binary. You know, man of God, woman of God, David, Esther, all of these Bible terms, which if you don't know them, we can talk about that too, but it's not really the point. Um, but I grew up in this, in this culture and understanding of the world where God made man and God made woman. And, and that was it, you know, and they were straight and they were heteronormative and they were gender conforming. And I think it took me a while of being out as a lesbian to realize that I wasn't my, that my gender identity and that my orientation were separate things. Now I do fully still identify as a lesbian um, because I feel more gender queer most days uh, and I think I'll always identify as a lesbian because that's what it feels like inside to me but I'll be like a lesbian with a beard I guess I guess we'll see how it evolves um, but it took me a long time to kind of meet out that because I like sports and because I like weightlifting and because I liked women um, all of those things weren't necessarily connected to my gender or my orientation and after I came to this process of understanding that I could be all of these things, I could be none of these things, I could be fluid with them, that's when I started to realize that despite all of the external factors, I still feel that there's a masculine part of me that I want to honor and develop and grow and let the world see. And that's when I, you know, started to realize that I needed to come out. Um, my partner, Elisa, who is, is, is fabulous, she's been really supportive. She is actually the one that forced me out of the closet. And the funny thing is it happened before she was necessarily comfortable with it, uh, which is ironic. And, you know, his, we're growing and learning and, and dealing with this together. And she very much has her own journey as much as I have mine. But thank goodness um, she had the foresight to say, I'm not comfortable with this, but I know this is what you need. And she actually has kind of pushed me out of the closet with everything, um, which... It's, it's so frustrating at times to feel so unaware of yourself, but thank goodness that I had someone in my life that was going to push me and support me like that. Um, so yeah, she pushed me out of the closet. Uh, like la middle of last year, I started telling my very close friends that I was feeling like gender variant and gender queer, and I wasn't really sure what was going to happen with it. And for a while, I was really adamant that I didn't need testosterone, that I didn't need top surgery, that I was just going to present more masculine as myself. Uh, but the more masculine presenting I've been, the more I've realized, yeah, I do want to take those steps. Um, I wish I could have realized them sooner, you know, to save other people discomfort and stuff, but I guess everybody's process is their process, so I can't be too hard on myself. Um, so that brings me to where I'm at today, you know. 99 days on testosterone and loving the vocal effects. Um, I, I have shaved uh, yesterday, but I've got a pretty substantial goatee going on, um, and I'm starting to see some baby hairs along the side of my face, so that's good. Um, yeah, I'm loving it. The muscle, uh, the muscle mass that I'm able to put on now is, is incredible because when I was just dealing with estrogen, I was able to bulk fast. So now with testosterone, I'm really, really peaking. Um, my body fat percentage is dropping. My fat is shifting from my hips more to my stomach. Um, I'm just really happy with everything so far. And 
I can't wait to see what happens. Um, I kind of made this video because I'm feeling a bit dysphoric uh, about top surgery. Um, I, I go to therapy weekly because therapy is the best thing that anyone can do for themselves. Um, and I was talking to my therapist this week about wanting top surgery and having finally verbally admitted that I wanted it. And she said, you know, she was asking me if my anxiety was coming from the fact that I was being impatient about um, about wanting top surgery. And inside my head, I'm screaming like, no, no, this isn't impatient. I've been feeling this way for 26 years. This is a moral victory for me to say it out loud. And, and this is something that the world should understand and like want to help me with. Um, so I started to make this video because, you know, as any, any guy or trans woman out there knows that has been searching for surgery, um, experienced surgeons don't grow on trees and the cost of it can be really crazy. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get my insurance to cover it because I live in New York State and the governor recently said, uh, Governor Cuomo recently said that uh, insurance companies were going to have to cover costs for transgender related care. Um, but I'm finding out that there are loopholes even in that um, and that some good doctors are losing money uh, because insurance isn't paying them the rate they deserve and, um, and, and some trans men and I would imagine trans women too are getting lower quality surgeries because less experienced surgeons are agreeing to take the insurance that's offered even though it's not it's not they're not putting out the quality of work that the experienced surgeons are um, so there's just there's always so many logistics in, in outside of my like trans journey that I'm on um, I'm currently looking for a new job because I have a job old job due to some really discriminatory practices um, I am you know I'm, I'm a 20 something I'm paying back student loans I'm looking for a way to get into a career that I want um, to make the money that I need to not only support myself but have for um, that I'm co-parenting with Elisa so there's just so much going on and I'm trying to take the steps that I can as I can and I always want to, I want to be vulnerable and I want to be honest and I want to live with integrity and I want to help other people do those things. So I really want to get this, uh, this YouTube channel going as a way to kind of give back and speak out and be a resource and at the very least just be an honest, vulnerable, transparent uh, person of integrity and say, you know, like I am here, I am trans, I am FTM, I am genderqueer, I do still identify as a lesbian. I want to be a pastor. Um, I, I have a, a wonderful uh, partner. I have four crazy kids. One of them has autism. We live in, in, in rural America. Um, and, I, and I am all of these things. And I want to get out there and I want to show people that you don't have to fit the boxes. You don't have to fit the binary. And even when you're in the middle of your turmoil, you can always help somebody else. So. Uh, before I made this video, I didn't understand how people could make 13-minute YouTube videos, but hopefully, uh, hopefully now this will go out into the world and do some good. So, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you need to talk, um, if you need to hear someone talk, whatever it is, feel free to hit me up because, you know, that's that's who I'm supposed to be in life as someone that helps other people. So. Uh, I'll keep you guys updated on the status of this journey. You keep me updated on the status of yours, and, and, and we'll do this together, all right? Peace out.